can kind of use these as like chopsticks or something. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? What's going on everyone? I'm Rich. Welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of comments around the tech community about the Samsung Galaxy S9 Ultra becoming like the iPad killer. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not trying to kill anybody here. That's that's not good. <laughs> here on the Rich Me channel, I only show love to all my children, okay? No hate. I'll try to look at the best of both worlds from all of my tech products I review. I wanna see how they are, what they're good, what they're not good at. Samsung has been bringing a lot of promising and cool features to the tablet market with their S9 Ultra and the One UI 5.1 update. And then a lot of us would come to know that Apple has just been the king of tablets. I mean, they basically engraved the name iPad into my grandmother's head. <laughs> Anytime I'm playing with some different tablets, my grandmother comes by and is like, oh my gosh, is that an iPad? And I'm like, no, grandmother. It's a Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. <laughs> Get it right. Nah, I'm just playing, I don't do that. <laughs> any large screen in general, like any tablet, will come off as an iPad. I'm sure you know some friends that are like that too. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not here to talk to you guys about my sob stories. In this video, I wanna give you guys a complete thorough review of the differences among the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra and the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, okay? This one has the Apple M2 chip in it as well. These are the flagship tablets from both the respective manufacturers, Samsung, Apple. I also have the second generation Apple Pencil 2. Uh, unfortunately, you gotta go and buy this separate. Anyways, I'm gonna briefly compare the design and hardware differences and move on to the software, the multitasking features, and then move on to the apps and softwares and how they work best, and eventually move on to Apple Pencil, how it feels for note-taking and productivity. All that good stuff will be addressed in this video right now, so let's get right into it. Yeah. All right, so first off, when you put both of these tablets side by side, you're gonna see that the S9 Ultra has a larger and taller 14.6 inch AMOLED screen with a 2960 by 1848 resolution display and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Now, this is great for watching movies, but a little bit too tall to comfortably use in portrait mode. As you can see, trying to text or use this for long periods of time, you can kind of feel that it is rather large. The bezels are much thinner, and I personally think looks a little bit more sleeker and slimmer than the iPad. I think it looks really, really beautiful here. Um, there's also that wedge-shaped notch at the top of the screen for the selfie camera, which also works great for biometrics such as facial recognition. Uh, you know, while the S9 Ultra is thinner and sleeker, it does feel uh, a little bit more delicate, per se, than the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro, with a thicker chassis and build, has a shorter height and a Liquid Retina XDR display of 2732 by 2048 pixels. This comes in at an approximate 4x3 aspect ratio. Now, this feels a little bit better for me to handle. I think it being more compact makes it a little bit easier to hold and use for longer periods of time. Holding the corners of the iPad feels a little bit nicer to me. It doesn't feel as sharping and jarring as the Tab S9 would. And what I mean by delicate, it's like the simple act of like, you know, putting it on the table or picking it up. I feel like the iPad just feels a little bit more durable by design. Both of these tablets have quad firing speakers, two on the bottom, two at the top. I think the S9 Ultra noticeably sounds better on here. There's a more punchier bass across all volume levels. And when you turn it up to the max volume, it sounds a little bit more fuller and gets a little bit louder than the iPad Pro for sure. Oh, and here's something else I forgot to mention too. Um, you can also put an expandable micro SD card storage in here. Oh baby, you can put a one terabyte micro SD card in here if you really want to and store as much pictures and videos as you wish. Like, bruh, that is just cheap storage upgrades right there, right in front of you. You don't have to pay like an extra 100, 200, 300 something dollars just to get an extra 200 more gigabytes that you would have to for an iPad, so. But with all that said and being taken care of, let's move on to the user interface. Starting off with One UI 5 on the S9 Ultra, you can actually split your screen a couple of different ways, like having two windows side by side. They can also go up or down, or even have a three-way split. You also have the addition of Samsung's Edge Panel, as they call it, which you can pull from the right-hand side of the screen for a quicker access of your apps. You can see all your apps here if you expand even further. What I found was super dope is you can customize your panels to have things like, which I mentioned before in my other videos, great tools like Smart Select, Screen Write, and all that stuff. Uh, this allows you to take a screenshot of a certain part and start jotting down notes away. You also get this fun gift maker, which you can get pretty creative at. I think this is a cool feature to send my friends, send an email or anything like that. Some of y'all know that I love watching the boondocks, writing funny shows, animes and cartoons in general. So just clipping out a gif of what I like to see and just sending that to my buddies. It's like one of those finishing touches on the S9. There's also a clipboard, which I found to be super, super useful as this allows you to check the previous text or pictures that you copied and have it saved on hand. Now with the iPad, if you want to take and mark up a screenshot, I think this is a little bit easier 
easier. Uh, basically, all you gotta do is take your Apple Pencil, swipe up from any of the corner, that'll take a screenshot first, and then from there, you can start writing, start annotating, do whatever you want on it. Then, as we move over to splitting the windows, uh, this is a little bit more wonkier in my opinion. Uh, first, you gotta choose an app, then press this three button icon on the top, choose another app, and uh, it can get a little bit cumbersome at moments, and you only get two windows left and the right. You can also just simply open up an app, pull up the home bar and drag any app you want on the other side. I feel a little bit limited here. If you want to open up some additional apps in pop-up view, you can slide the home bar up and drag an app toward the middle, but then it'll go to one of its side. And if you want to add some more, the apps will kind of like stack on top of each other. Um, if you want to switch the apps, you can scroll across to the bottom. I mean, I guess it works, but I do feel a little bit trapped or locked per se to how iPad OS is handling their tabs. With One UI 5, you can drag and drop any app towards the middle. It'll pop up, you can resize it, you can move it anywhere you'd like. This is really nice if uh, you have like a calculator open and you don't want to take it up the entire screen or anything like that. And, you know, you can kind of put it down there, put it to the left, put it to the side which I found was a little bit more freer, felt more like a computer, like I would say. One UI 5 also has multiple user profiles too. So you can log out on the main account and add different profiles on it, which I found is great for sharing this amongst your family members or peers. Maybe you have some important apps or documents on one profile that you don't want anyone else seeing or using. All right, now one pretty cool and advanced edge I think Samsung has over Apple right now is Samsung DeX. And for those that don't know what DeX is, if you pull down the notifications tab down twice, you can click this button DeX mode, which allows the S9 Ultra or really any other Samsung device that has this to cast like a PC-like experience. You can also open several apps at the same time and they won't bind to a particular corner unless you want them to. You can have your apps side by side, you can stack them on top of each other, you can resize them, you can move them around. I think the folder and file organization here looks wonderful. Like you can see your pictures, your videos, your documents. Also, get yourself one of these USB hubs. I'm missing the back plate on this. <laughs> it has an HDMI port which you can plug in and connect it onto a monitor. From there, you can cast your or Samsung DeX onto a bigger screen. This is really practical to use if you're editing photos, you need two separate screens, or you got a bunch of documents or pages or anything you gotta do for work. And having the extra screen estate is super nice. I had a lot of work professional and creative friends ask me like, yo, I want extra screen. Do I get a tablet? Do I buy another monitor? What can I do? Get one of these, plug her in, and I think you're ready to go. And when I talk about more about the second screen feature, uh, you can literally use this as like a second display, like an extension. Like what? I I'm not lying to you guys. Like you can have your own screen right here on your computer you can kind of move the tabs onto the second one. But with all that being talked about already, let's move on to the pencils, okay? This is kind of cool. I can kind of use these as like chopsticks or something. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? All right, so the differences between these pencils are a lot. All right, so the iPad magnetically and simply just snaps on to one of the sides. This stays on pretty dang well and it's very easy to kind of like guess and you know, put it wherever, but it snaps on super quick. It's easy like that. And if you do kind of mishandle it, it'll snap back on pretty tightly. The S9 Ultra is a little bit weird. You got this little uh, bar that's right here, kind of snap it on. It's not as secure as the iPad, I would say. Sure, you can put it on the side as well, but it's not going to charge. I'm grabbing or using it on a table. It would easily slip out a lot. I don't know, they could probably do with a better placement on this, honestly. The S Pen is significantly lighter, so I think this is better for those long writing sessions for notes and lectures. There's also a softer tip on the S Pen, so when you actually write with this, to me, it feels smoother, much, much softer. Like, listen to this. Very, very gentle on the tip. And you can also change these tips too if you get bored. You can get a hard tip with it, you can get a soft tip. Amazon has a bunch of these tips you can buy online. The tip is much sharper on the Apple Pencil, so it could feel like you're a little bit more accurate, a little bit more precise when you're writing down with it. And there's also a physical button which feels more responsive when you're switching to erase mode or anything like that. Clicking it feels a lot more responsive than, uh, you know, tapping wherever, tapping and hoping that it'll, you know, switch over to erase mode in the Apple Pencil, but this one, Feels a little bit more thicker, a little bit more sturdier. The tip is a little bit more blunt, so it's not as precise feeling as the S Pen. It is harder on the screen, listen to this. But does feel more durable in my opinion. And I think the extra weight makes you feel more rigid, more solid, if that makes sense. Oh, let's not forget that you also have to go buy this separately for like an extra 129 US dollars. <sighs> Making us buy so much. 
Anyways, kind of a hard toss up on both of these pencils. Let me know what you guys think. All right, now let's talk about the apps. Apple Notes, in my opinion, is a little bit limited. Uh, actually not, it, it needs a lot of work, okay? <laughs> Adding text and pictures seems a little bit too structured. Things are broken up into brackets, so you can't draw over these sections, which seems a little bit weird, I think. I can't see this being the best move because what if you'd like to draw on a picture or a text that you just put up? You can, however, download some good note-taking apps like Notability or GoodNotes. Those are very, very popular Apple apps which work really good for note-taking. Those two apps are technically on the Google Play Store, but it's a little bit weird because I don't even know if they're real apps, to be honest. You can just look at the ratings. I think it's a weird port or someone else did it. Samsung Notes over here is heavily, heavily underrated. I think they've done a much better job with note-taking. You can draw over text and images. There's none of this weird bracketing tier. You can easily copy paste images from the web via a simple drag and drop onto the notes page. And it kind of feels more like you're writing on paper. I think the experience is nicer. You can change the background color too. Samsung also has much better cross compatibility with their files. As you can see right here, you can export these notes into a PDF, a Word document, a PowerPoint image, or a text file. You can also add recordings on here too. So you can record lectures, any conference meetings that you're in. Yo, 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 what's good? This is a voice recording, bro. When it comes to apps like Microsoft OneDrive, I found the experience to be pretty similar on both. The tracking of the pens are a little bit slow, in my opinion. You can see this four times slow motion input lag on camera right here. Uh, it's not a huge deal breaker, but they work really good. I've taken a lot, a lot of notes on those and I felt that to be pretty okay. There's a handful more professional apps on Apple. Like you're gonna miss out on Procreate if you had a Samsung. Artists and creative people that are watching this video, let me know how these apps work for you and what they're like. I'm not an artistic drawer by any means. I wish I could be, but I got a lot of other things I'm doing. That's cool, but I've been using Sketchbook on both machines and I think they work pretty well. The app support is nice, bugs are very limited, not too much compatibility errors on both I've seen, so. All right, and of course, uh, there's AirDrop on Apple, which I found to be very, very, very useful when transferring photos and files from my iPhone to my iPad, to the MacBook, to the Mac. I mean, it's a whole ecosystem, but uh, so it is the same with Samsung. Okay, Samsung has a Samsung share, which is basically the same thing as AirDrop, it's just not as popular as many of us would come to know it as, but it works the same way and it works super, super fast too. You can drop pictures or photos from your Samsung S23 Ultra or any phone in general, your Samsung Galaxy Buck onto your tablet, move that around. It's the same thing. I'm trying to give it some more light so people know about it. I love AirDrop a lot and they were kind of first to the market, really hitting down the ecosystem stuff. But yeah, go down in the comments below. Tell me what you guys think of both of these tablets, both of these software and apps compare. What do you think is better? Which one do you prefer? Which one are you looking at getting? Do you have any of these tablets before, like the previous generation? or you know if you want to talk to me talk to me down in the comments i'll see you down there below i'm gonna to talk to you guys get the comment section cooking we already know baby i genuinely want to hear all the input so i can learn more and i think collaboration between the viewer and the audience is nice too so go down in the comments cook it up like it if you did let me know if i missed out on anything but to wrap up i think the ipad is a little bit more better a little bit sturdier when it comes to taking notes a little bit more simpler and it does get you from a to b in a very very terrific and clean simple way while the s9 ultra has a lot of features that if you can utilize all that, you're gonna be glad that you went with it. So, comes down to user preferences. Anyways, that's all I have for today's video, and until the next one, guys, I'll see you then.